are this close to the end of the school year. Yes, I want interactions, lots of talking, but we want to try to get through everything. Does anyone remember Fish and Wildlife's mission statement? We are around to make sure that we always conserve and enhance our resources so you guys can go hunting and fishing. That's what we want you to do. So Amy Eichhorn, conservation educator. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what you guys do in the school systems here. We normally teach programs for fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. They are based off of different environmental education programs. So some years we'll do reasons for seasons, why we go hunting, the meaning behind hunting. Sometimes we talk more history with Native Americans. So who can think back to a disease that's killing off some of our bat species right now? We've been very fortunate that St. Aloysius has allowed the Department of Fish and Wildlife and our conservation educators for years to come in and teach conservation education. Well, it's been a great benefit for us. There's such a benefit having that connection, uh, that field work and that real life connection that uh, we love having you come in. Would love to see you more often. Lots of bats will actually help find food, share their food with other bats. They help raise each other's babies within the colony. You should really listen to educators because the things they say can be pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And you can go to the summer camp and it can be really fun and then you just get to go do cool things if you take action on what you hear. Eighth grader Madeline West was motivated to take action. When you are in a river or lake or any body of water, you are most likely surrounded by mussels. You might not realize well, I wrote a conservation essay and I won first place in Oldham County and so it sparked the interest to come here. Here is the Center for Moss Conservation in Frankfort, Kentucky. This is our essay winner, Madeline. Hi. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. I'm Monty. Nice to meet you, Madeline. You too. And today, Madeline gets a personal tour of the facility with Dr. Monty McGregor. Yeah. Freshwater mussels, the places they live, are in areas that are not impacted by people as much, and especially the rare ones. The center was founded in 2002 with a mission to restore and recover rare and endangered mussels here in Kentucky. That's what that's called, the salamander mussel. It doesn't get very big. Even though they are so small and seem of little importance, mussels do so much for our environment. This is why we need to stop mussel endangerment. In your essay, did you discuss some of the life history of the mussel? It was mainly an argumentative piece to where it was like, help save them. I kind of explained how they were endangered and um, like how many species we had in Kentucky and things like that. Oh, okay. And then, there are 292 species of mussels in North America. 103 of these species are in Kentucky. This is about one third of the mussels in North America. Already, 20 mussel species have disappeared because of water pollution, soil erosion, and bad habitats or living conditions. 36 other species of mussels are endangered for the same reasons. Of these 36, 27 species of endangered mussels live in Kentucky. This is a big problem for our environment because of all the things mussels do for us. You know, you're inspiring kids every day. So today you get a little bit of an inside look of a, of a young, now eighth grader. So it's, isn't that fantastic to see? It is. When they grab something just out of a program that's a small little part of the program and go with it and get real excited about it. It, it makes it all worthwhile, doesn't it? Does. It does. Mussels are so important because of the things they do for our water. For example, they take out sediments, nutrients, and contaminants in the water, which makes it cleaner. So when you see healthy and clean water, there was most likely mussels involved in making the water that way. I'm going to find the, the juveniles under here. Is that them, like, moving around? Oh, that's them right there, yes. <laughs> this is the juvenile. There's his foot. It's crawling around. Oh, they're highly mobile. They move around a lot. This is their stomach. This is their intestine. Along with keeping our water clear, mussels provide a good source of food for aquatic animals, and some of them produce pearls for jewelry. So take a look under the scope, and you can see them. They look a lot better under there. Without mussels, none of these great things would be able to happen for our environment. Yeah, that's very cool. Do you like to get outdoors and uh, you get in the creeks and streams and look for mussels? Have you done that yeah. in the past? Yeah. yeah. I've done it in the creeks and streams, and sometimes even at the beaches you can find the mussels. Those are the bigger mussels. These are the broodstock. These are the, the adult females. Mm -hmm. So this one here is called the fan shell. I think we all know that uh, our, our culture is going a, a little bit of a different direction, and as a result, young people don't have that opportunity 
to get into the field and to do some of the things to hunt and to fish and, and like you say, get out on the water. So anything that we can do to provide those opportunities and to help them make that connection is invaluable. So what we're doing in these trays is every one of these green trays can hold four to 5,000 mussels. Then what we do is we have food in this tank that's, that's calculated based on how many are in here. And then we've come up with these automated systems to feed them. So we have really pioneered some of this technology as far as how to do this automatically. And, and uh, you won't see anything like this hardly anywhere else. Along with water pollution, soil erosion also kills mussels. Soil erosion is the washing away of soil transported by water. Sometimes in the process of soil erosion, too much dirt will be added to the water, which also kills mussels. Even though it doesn't look good for mussels now, there is still hope. You always got to put a little bit of the work in, and you obviously did that, and someone came in and inspired you a little bit, and you put the work forth, and lo and behold, it opened doors for you to do other things. So <laughs> continue that hard work, and it'll always pay off. So it's called a bissel threat. So the mussels produce those. They glue themselves to rocks. So when the flood comes, they don't get blown away. So you are holding one of the rarest mussels on the planet. This is called the Cumberlandian comb shell. It's only found in a few locations. Extremely rare. This is less than a year old. We have more in this, these two tanks than they're in the whole state of Kentucky and Tennessee. People are becoming more aware of mussels every day. There is even a mussel hatchery in Frankfurt where some mussels are being raised or brought back to health so that the mussels can be brought to rivers and continue to make our water cleaner. Mussels are so small, but now you know how important they are for our environment. Even the smallest things can be of the most importance. <laughs>